Hey everyone, this is Dr. Binning. I wanted to do a quick instructional video um, and take care of some questions that commonly arise when doing a Dutch hormone panel. And this is a test, it's a urine test, and it's used to look at hormones such as cortisol, um, so all your stress hormones, um, testosterone, estrogen, and their breakdown as well. So it's a very important test that we run on most patients. Um, so what we'll do is start with what's in the box. So in the box you have a test requisition form. Um, fill this out um, as soon as you get the test. And then you have these little cartons of paper where that actually contain the filter paper which you'll collect your sample with. Um, so you also have shipping information. So whenever you're doing this Dutch test, um, one of the first things you should figure out is when you can do this test. Now for males and females who aren't um, having a menstrual cycle anymore, you can pick any day of the month and you can do it. However, if you're still having your menstrual cycle, you want to do it between the 19th and 22nd day of your cycle. So and that's of a typical cycle, of, which is 28 days long. Now, if you have a longer cycle, say 30 days, you just add two days to that range of 19 to 22. So instead of 19 to 22, if you have a 30 day cycle, it would be 20 to 24. And if you have a shorter cycle, then you just subtract that number of days that your cycle is shorter from that range. And that's the, the days of your cycle that you can do this test. Um, so I hope that is clear. Um, that's the first thing you wanna figure out. Then what you do is you open this up after filling all this out, okay? And what you'll do is you'll see on the back of here, each um, piece of paper has a filter, and this is what you can urinate directly on, or you can pee into a clean cup or a container and dip this filter paper into it. And what you do after each, after each sample is you let them dry in the air for 24 hours. So you don't want to just close it, just let it dry like this for 24 hours. But what you do before you do the sample is write, fill out this information and circle which sample you're doing. So most people only send in four samples. So there's a dinner time, which is actually the night before. Um, and then there's a bedtime again the night before. And then you have waking up in the morning within 10 minutes. And you have two hours after waking. And the fifth one is an extra one, and you only do that one if you wake up at night and have to go to the bathroom, then you collect that urine sample as well, okay? So the first one you do is at dinner time. And what you need to make sure you don't do is consume any coffee or large fluid intakes after you have lunch, okay? And no fluid intake two hours prior to when you do this sample. So if you do this at six o'clock, no fluid intake after six, uh, 4 p.m. and no coffee for, since you've had lunch, okay? And then what you'll do is collect this again. You can urinate directly onto this or dip it into a container that has your urine into it, not into the toilet, and you let it air dry for 24 hours. Then before you go to bed, you do the same thing. This one you'll mark off bedtime, fill out the rest of the information, and again, no fluid intake two hours before doing this test, and you urinate, capture the sample, and you let it air dry for 24 hours. Then when you wake up in the morning, what you will do is within 10 minutes of waking, collect the sample. Okay, it's very important to do it within 10 minutes of waking. Um, and you'll collect the sample, and again, allow it to air dry. Then two hours after waking, you have the last sample. Um, and what you do then is you, between the, the waking sample and the two hours after waking, you're allowed to have no more than one cup of water or fluid. Okay, so once you hit that two hour mark after waking, urinate, collect your um, sample onto this filter paper, and then again, allow these to dry for a 24 hour period. Um, once it's dried for 24 hours, for 24 hours, you can close all these, put them back into the plastic Ziploc bag, and you'd, so you'd put them back into here, 
take your requisition form, make sure you fill out all the information on the front and back of the page, um, and you'd have to put in what time your samples were collected, so on and so on here. It's pretty straightforward. And you'd throw this into the front of the Ziploc bag, like such, and then you would take it to get shipped um, from FedEx, and all the shipping documents are right here. However, if you can't ship it that the, with that day, what you need to do is throw this package into the freezer and freeze it till you're able to ship it. Um, and you don't want to wait too long, but if you have to wait a day because you can't get to FedEx, just put it into the freezer, and then when you go to ship it that day, you pull it out of the freezer, take it to FedEx, and ship it. I hope this video gives you a little more direction on how and when to do this test because it can be confusing. Um, but I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.